What's up people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing does exercise order actually matter when it comes to one, strength gains, and two, hypertrophy, aka muscle gain. Have you been wondering whether to do your bench press before your fly on chest day? Or have you been considering doing your chest fly, then your bench press? I'll be answering these key questions in today's video. Before we get into it, please drop the video a like. Remember to subscribe if you're new around here for more content, and let's get into the video. So there's two main schools of thought when it comes to exercise order in a training program. You've got the camp that say, get the most bang for your buck, always do the multi-joint movement, so your compound lifts, such as your bench press, your shoulder press, your squats, your deadlifts, pull-ups, rows, etc. Always do these first because you get the most bang for the buck, you're targeting more muscle groups in one go, always get the, and they're the most fatiguing. So do these exercises first before then moving on to isolation movements. Now the second camp of, of people will say that your ability to get the muscle fully contracted, so fully short as we refer to it, diminishes during the workout due to local and non-local fatigue. So essentially the more tired you get during your workout, and the later on in the session that you put an isolation exercise, for example, a side lateral raise with dumbbells or cables, if you do that towards the end of your session, your ability to fully contract the side delts is going to be a lot more difficult than if you put it at the start of your workout. So there'll be the camp that say that you should perform isolation movements for the particular muscles that you want to target in that session before you go into your compound lifts because the ability to fully contract a muscle gets more difficult as fatigue builds during the workout. Also another point mentioned by the isolation movement before compound movement camp will be that um, it, helps to, it helps to prime the muscles essentially for the bigger compound lifts so, and helps with sort of fe actually feeling the targeting muscle that we're working, so that mind-muscle connection. So if you think about, for example, doing a chest fly movement where you're bringing the arms across the body so your horizontal adduction of the arm all the way across the body to fully shorten the pec before you then go into a chest press movement then you're going to establish a better mind muscle connection so this is one of the other theories proposed by people saying do isolations first so these are the two counts your multi-joint compound exercise movements first into your isolations or vice versa. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing one meta-analysis done by Nunez and Schoenfield et al. A high quality meta-analysis performed in February 2020, which considered 11 good to high quality studies across this area, which considered both strength and hypertrophy gains based on multi-joint versus single joint exercise order. So this meta-analysis considered 11 studies which covered a range of genders and ages and trained versus untrained individuals. Trained, resistance trained individuals were classed as anyone with six months or more resistance training experience and the age buckets considered were young which was 18 to 39 40 to 60 was classed as middle age and anyone over 60 was considered older participants. In terms of the split of the studies across the 11 studies, you had eight studies out of 11 which were untrained individuals, so less than six months training experience, although the caveat on one of those is that they were judo athletes who had a bit of training experience but less than six months. In terms of the gender split, we had two studies that were all female, eight that were all male and one mixed. And in terms of the age ranges, we had three studies which were an older adults over 60, one middle-aged between 40 and 60, 
and the remaining seven studies were for younger adults 18 to 39. So in terms of how they measured strength and hypertrophy in this meta-analysis, in terms of all the studies analysed, the strength was measured by generally performing one rep maxes and a couple of studies looked at 10 rep, 10 rep maxes as well with one covering both one rep max and 10 rep max. In terms of the methods of measuring hypertrophy, there were a range of methods considered including resonance, imaging, bioimpedance, measuring muscle thickness, x-rays, ultrasound, etc. So loads of methods were considered in terms of how we actually look at muscle hypertrophy. So what did they find? Well, in terms of the strength results, the researchers found overall that the, major the majority of the study supported the idea that the greater strength was found in multi-joint movements, so compound lifts such as the bench press or a leg press, for example, instead of a single joint movement, such as a chest fly or a leg extension, there was greater strength gains in the multi-joint movement over the single joint movement when performed in the exercise order of multi-joint movement first. And similarly, they found that there were greater strength gains in the single joint movement in the cases of performing a single joint versus a multi-joint movement in that exercise order. So essentially what this is saying to us is that the exercise performed first in the session when we are freshest and there is less fatigue is going to produce greater strength gains over a number of weeks. The I will note here that the average length of the studies looked at in this meta-analysis was nine weeks with a range between tw uh, six and 12 and 268 participants in total were looked at. The researchers highlighted the importance of the principle of specificity, which is difficult to say, in resistance training. Essentially, essentially, the exercise selection that we make and the adaptations in the body are specific to the exercises performed. Therefore, the priority principle comes in where the, ex the muscle groups that you want to prioritize should be put first in the session. If you want to improve your strength on the bench press it makes sense to put that at the start of your workout if let's say it's a push session it makes sense that if you want to prioritize strength on the bench press over a shoulder press or overhead press do the bench press for, as your first exercise and then move on to shoulder work or vice versa so the priority principle makes sense from a strength gains point of view in terms of the results for hypertrophy the researchers found no significant differences between the exercise order of multi-joint movement, compound movement before single joint movement and vice versa. So over this average of a nine week period across the studies, no significant difference in terms of muscle hypertrophy, aka muscle gain between the different exercise orders. However, there's a number of caveats and discussions that we'll go into shortly on this. So firstly, in terms of the way that they actually measured hypertrophy, so say say examples where they measured muscle thickness, there was a difference in the roles of the muscles in terms of the movement. So three of the studies, for example, looked at the hypertrophy associated with the biceps when starting with a single joint movement being the bicep curl in which the biceps are the agonists, AKA the prime movers followed by a multi-joint exercise being the lat pull down. So a single joint bicep curl into a lat pull down or vice versa. And so if they're looking at the muscle thickness of the biceps in relation to this, it's important to note that the biceps are not the prime movers in both of these movements. They only really act as a synergist to support the upper back in a lat pull down, for example. So the researchers have in the meta-analysis have put in the discussion and the conclusion that further research is required in terms of looking at the role of muscles in both movements being a prime mover. For example, uh, we, could look at, we could look at further research which compares a pec fly in which the pec major is a prime mover. So performing a pec fly before a bench press 
variation, so a machine press, uh, barbell press or a dumbbell press, for example, in which the pec major is also a prime mover, like, aka comparing like for like. The more research could be useful here, but to determine muscle thickness uh, and essentially hypertrophy in the pec major for these two comparisons. Whereas some of the studies here, as, in, as I've said, in three of the cases, they're looking at exercises that are not prime movers in both exercises. So that's one limitation, important limitation to note. However, there was one study by Avalar in 2019, which compared the leg press, so a multi-joint leg movement for the quads, um, and versus a leg extension, so a single joint movement for the quads, and they compared the exercise order of doing the leg press before the leg extension and vice versa, and they found no significant difference in quad development in terms of that exercise order. So this is only one study, but that does slightly counter the point in terms of the, the roles of the muscle. So this is, this is one study that did look at where the uh, quad hypertrophy was associated with prime movers in both cases. So what can you take from this? Well, I think what we can take from this, given the quality of the studies, is that ultimately it comes down to personal preference in terms of exercise order. There's people that will swear by doing a isolation movement first before going into compounds and vice versa. And I think you have to try both and just see what works for you. I, tr I can get on with both, for example, in my anecdotal experience. I've tried doing a leg extension before going into a squat or a leg press and I've done the, and I've done it the other way around. I don't see a massive difference in terms of performance uh, through both. I would advise you to try both approaches out, see what you enjoy most, and always base your training around the priority principle and the principle of specificity. So if you have a preference for a particular muscle group during one block of training, that you want to focus on, put it first in the workout. Simply put, the fresher you are at the start of your workout, the better you're gonna perform in terms of strength, and it doesn't look like it's gonna have a massive impact on your gains. So pick the muscle groups that you wanna prioritize over the others during a certain block of training, then structure your workouts by putting the exercises for the muscle groups you wanna prioritize earlier in the workout. I think it's good to cycle through these approaches and give everything a fair chance before writing anything off and just dismissing your way as gospel, right? I think it's good to see the validity in each approach. I think one important final sort of consideration I would say in terms of exercise order is if you're a beginner or you're someone that's relatively early on in your training career, I would suggest that you probably prioritize compound lifts more over your isolation movement just because you're not you're not that experienced at the big lifts. And I think the better that you get at executing these big compound lifts, so your your rows, your pull-ups, your benching, your overhead pressing, uh, squatting and deadlifts, I think the better you get at executing these movements and the more practice you get, at performing the, these exercises when you're fresh, the more long-term benefit you're gonna have in terms of muscle growth because by progressively overloading these big key movements over time, it's just gonna, it's, they're the, the big movements that you wanna be prioritizing, logging and improving on over time. So if you're more of a beginner, I think probably prioritize getting used to these movement patterns, the more complicated movement patterns because as you get more fatigued later in the workout, um, it's going to be harder to execute these movements. So if you're a beginner, I'd probably recommend doing compounds first. If you're more intermediate to advanced, then as I say, definitely look at playing around with the exercise order in terms of isolation first or compound first based on your priorities of, of areas that you want to work on and see what works best for you. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and you took something from it. If you did, reminder to drop the video a like, please subscribe for more content and catch you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. See you in a bit.